welcome to the GA Huddle. I'm Stephanie with Gaming America, and I'm here with John Murray, who is the Director of Race and Sports at Westgate Las Vegas. Hello, John. Hi, Stephanie. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Early morning here. That's Very right. different time zone for the two of us. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Our first question actually may play into the fact that it's uh, just the beginning of the day for you because we wanted to ask you what a typical day as Vegas Murray looks like and uh, what you do for Westgate. Yeah, well, every day is a little bit different. It depends a lot on the season. You know, we're in late June now, so NBA is over, NHL is over. Football is on the horizon. We're getting ready for the Super Contest. We start taking entries for the Westgate Super Contest on Saturday, July 1st. And we're just getting ready for football in general and cycling through our vacations, spending a lot of time encouraging our guys to go on vacation right now. Get out of the office, go do something, get all your vacation burned up, be back in time for football. And we're working on some staffing, promotions internally and external hires and moving some pieces around. Right now, it's all about getting our team ready for football season, experimenting with some different betting options we have, playing around with a few different ideas we have. This is a good time of year for us to try out some new things, see what sticks, see what doesn't work, and just sort of get our betting menu in, in top form in time for the football season, because that's when we make our money. Great. Uh, that follows on nicely to the fact that we know you've talked about having the largest wagering menu in the state of Nevada, and we wanted to ask, mm -hmm. in addition to football, what that entails and how many sports there are. Well, we have one of the largest wagering menus in Nevada, no question about that. I mean, outside of football, the big sports for us are our NBA, college basketball, college football, of course, is number two behind the NFL. Right now, the markets are dominated by baseball. We've got a lot of baseball offerings at the Westgate Superbook. Uh, tennis, we've got Wimbledon coming up. I'm sure you guys are excited about that. Wimbledon's a big for us because there's not a whole lot going on. And then the big sport, the, the rapidly growing sport, I think, in all of sports betting, most growing sport is the UFC. Mixed martial arts, mostly the UFC, is a very high-volume sport for us. We've got a big event next Saturday, UFC 290. It's here at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. And there's other big pay-per-views this summer in Salt Lake City and Boston. MMA and boxing will help carry us through these slow months and, and bridge that gap to football season. Okay. We also wanted to ask about another offering, which would be sort of horse racing. So you are the world's largest race and sports book and Circa mm -hmm. Resort claims to have the largest sports book. And we wanted to yeah. know if that race distinction was what sets you apart. I, I think that they get away with that because they're taller than us. I mean, I have oh. to ask you guys over there, but we do have more square footage okay. at the Westgate Las Vegas sports book. They have a beautiful sports book as well, the Circa, Circa Resort in downtown Las Vegas. They are taller. I think they're three stories. So I think it's a matter of semantics. But if you want to go by square footage, the biggest sports book in Las Vegas resides at the Westgate Las Vegas. So it's a, a height thing rather than a horse racing or different sports offered thing. I, th I think so. Or maybe they get around it by saying biggest sports book because they don't. But they do a lot of race there as well. They just don't. Do, mm. They don't do pair mutual horse wagering, but they do book horse races uh, on themselves. Okay. Has the existence of circas had any effect on people visiting Westgate's sports books since the uh, hotels well, are so close together? It's certainly impacted our contests. You know, Circa has, they run some big contests and, uh, that go against our super contest, our super contest goal. But uh, I think the presence of other competitive sports books like Circa is good for the whole city. It's good for business. It draws more attention to sports betting. And our handle numbers are higher than they've ever been before which I think surprises people because there is more competition, not just from the local sports book, but also from the outside of Nevada sports books. You know, we, we have a lot of big customers in Arizona. Sports betting is legal in Arizona now. Maybe instead of coming to Nevada, they're just staying at home in Arizona. Luckily for us, we do run a sports book app in Arizona, Superbook Arizona, but pulling some of your customers out of Nevada and they, they play in the states they live in, that does impact handle somewhat, but sports betting is still bigger than ever. Yeah, and the um, the friendly competition is pretty much what sports is about, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I agree with that. It, it forces everybody to raise their game, which is good. Great. We did want to ask the difference between online strategy and retail strategy, speaking of that mm -hmm. app, if you can tell us sort of the insights there. We've got a lower limits on the app than we do at the counter. And one of the reasons for that is we've noticed people, they're probably working in cahoots, although we can't prove that. They'll all bet the same 
like five or six customers got the same thing at the same exact time on the app, which you can prevent that at the counter by keying in the bet and then moving the price. So one of the things you'll see there is a little bit of a lower limit for the mobile side versus the counter side. But we have the same betting uh, betting menu at the counter and at the window and our book, bookmaking practices would be the same. So the strategy is really just like a holistic experience where they're not super different, sorry, super different from each other. Uh, uh, that That is fair. I mean, I, I think uh, you want to, we like having the business at the counter too, but it makes more sense for customers to get the mobile app. And I would encourage everybody to get two, three, four different mobile accounts and always make sure you're getting the best of the number on every bet you place. That's going to give you the best opportunity to win. It'd be very difficult for anybody, even the best sports better in the world is not going to win just betting with one account at one place. You, you've got to shop around and get the best numbers if you want to give yourself a real chance. If you want to do this for more than recreational purposes, that's going to be your only goal. Okay. We did want to ask as well how players have done on your app and at your sports book and what the most popular sporting event has been for you. Was that UFC, as you mentioned, or was there another event? Uh, and how did the players do? Most popular is always going to be the Super Bowl. And okay. we had a really big Super Bowl this year, Philadelphia, Kansas City. We did well in that game. Not as well as I would like. Uh, you know, there were so many points scored in that game. It was such a high scoring game. That doesn't really bode well for our proposition menu. We do more Super Bowl props, I think, than anybody in Nevada. And when the game is that high scoring, we tend to not do very well. But we did well with Kansas City winning. We, we were very nervous at halftime. Kansas City was down by 11. The Holmes was limping off to the sideline, very quiet in the risk room at halftime on Super Bowl Sunday. But the Chiefs rallied. They won the game, and we did pretty well. Outside of Super Bowl Sunday, March Madness is definitely the, big, the biggest event for us especially those first two days, Thursday and Friday, the first round. And we did very well this year. Had a very good March Madness. So when you say we, you mean uh, you as a sports book or your players or customer uh, base? I'm, well, I'm, I mean the Westgate Las Vegas, but I, sure. I, hope the, I, hope the, I hope the players had fun too. No, it's a fun, March Madness is a lot of fun. It's wild. There's so many games. There's so many different bets going on. So many people in the room. It was a fun weekend. Excellent. Uh, what do you think about uh, moving to another sport, the Oakland A's moving to Las Vegas? Well, I, I might be the wrong person to ask because I love baseball so much. I, I'd be thrilled to have a major league baseball team in Las Vegas. I know there's some people. Sounds like you're the right it. person then. Well, no, there's a lot of people that worry about it. They worry about the cost of building the stadium for the team. There's some questions circling about the Oakland A's ownership. There's a lot of people in Las Vegas that would rather have an expansion franchise. I'm not here to agree or disagree with those people. I'm just excited to get a baseball team here. I'm tired of having to go to California every time I want to watch a baseball game. <laughs> It'd be nice to go down the street and watch Major League Baseball. That'd be pretty cool. Sure. Do you think the betters agree and that there'll be more involvement on those games? Well, I, I have to say yes, because I've seen the betting increase on hockey with the Vegas Golden Knights in town. Now, that's a unique situation. We talk about a team that made the Stanley Cup final in their first season, won the Stanley Cup in their sixth season, and made the playoffs almost every year in between. Extremely unlikely that the Oakland A's would have that kind of success, and out of the gate, I mean. But if the A's ever do become a top team, and they're in Las Vegas, I would imagine we'll see a huge spike in handle here in Las Vegas. Okay. Uh, well, we have one more question for you, and that is about sure. another big upcoming event, and that is the Las Vegas Grand Prix, and whether you think people will be flocking to the Westgate Superbook to watch it there, or whether you think the betters will be uh, placing bets on that kind of an event. I hope so, because it's it's doing a lot to block traffic all over the city. So I hope it's a big event for Las Vegas. Now, F1 has never been a huge betting sport in the United States. And I think a big part of that is because you've got such consensus favorites in those races. There's not a lot of different drivers that can realistically win the race. So we'll see what happens this year. Certainly expect it to be the most bet F1 race ever in Nevada by far. I expect huge crowds of people here, people that have big money, should bring a lot of money to the city. We'll see how it does for better. But I think it's going to have more ancillary benefits for the city in terms of food and beverage sales, hotel room sales, other types of revenue. Because F1 has never been a big betting sport. It's hard when one of the drivers is minus 300 to win the race before they even start. That's not good for betting. Those are quite and some odds. You've got to think about the time of the year, too. It's going up against the National Football League, college football, NBA, NHL. College basketball will have started by then. It's a tough spot on the sports calendar for it to really make a dent, but I think it's going to have a lot of other benefits for Las Vegas. So I'm excited to have it. Great. 
Well, uh, I hope they come watch it, maybe if they have to do so by foot. <laughs> but um, <laughs> thank you for talking to us today and of course. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day in Vegas. Thank you, Stephanie.